So the device that I'm discussing with you today is called a spinal cord stimulator. It consists of a battery pack, which is implanted in the patient's uh, flank, typically, uh, in the low portion of their back. And then it consists of uh, leads, which are actually the electrical part uh, of the uh, system uh, that conduct the electricity, and they're implanted uh, near the spine. Well, spinal cord stimulators are FDA approved and used widely for nerve or neuropathic pain that's chronic for patients, so that's long-lasting type of pain. A typical patient who would come here and receive a spinal cord stimulator would be a patient who had uh, nerve type pain, often in an extremity, perhaps after having had a back injury or back surgery with resulting pain, perhaps after having uh, had shingles and having chronic pain from that. Peripheral neuropathy is an indication as are nerve injuries that result in chronic pain. There's many indications, but those are some of the most common. It is not a first-line defense, so typically we would have the patients go through conservative therapies first. We would have them go through physical therapy, we would have them trial various medications, and then we would consider trialing a spinal cord stimulator if those options failed for them. The lead that is placed near the spinal cord delivers an electrical signal to the posterior portion of the spinal cord. The idea is that the patient experiences a pleasant sensation in the area where they would typically have pain. So the pain signals that are trying to travel up the spinal cord to the brain are blocked and the brain cannot read those signals of pain. So these devices have been around for decades. They've been used for chronic pain. The first device was uh, placed by a neurosurgeon, actually Norm Sheely, and was used for cancer pain. It wasn't very successful because of the implantation technique, but things have developed over the years and now um, thousands and thousands of patients are receiving these, this therapy worldwide every year. Prior to a full implant, patients receive a trial. So they get to try out the therapy to know if it works before they invest in having this implanted in their body. So a trial procedure is done similarly to uh, a full implant. We do it in, in a sterile environment using a fluoroscope or live x-ray for guidance. We place an epidural needle in the patient's back as they're lying on their stomach. And then we implant a lead near their spine. It, it is external uh, on the outside of their body. They wear a battery pack externally for three to five days and try out this therapy and see if it works for them. If it works for their pain, then we can implant the full device. These patients are never, uh, almost never hospitalized, no indication for that. It's outpatient. They come here to an outpatient surgical center. The implant itself takes less than two hours typically, and then they are free to be discharged that day. So previously, patients who received a spinal cord stimulator could not have MRIs afterward. Uh, that's been the mantra that we've been telling patients for years. So this has precluded a number of patients who would be excellent candidates, but need to be monitored with MRIs uh, periodically, or want to receive MRIs later in their life, uh, so they were unable to have a stimulator, or they needed to have it removed later. So the FDA approval of this device that can uh, be put through an MRI machine uh, opens this therapy for thousands more patients, uh, many more patients than we've previously been able to offer it to. So the uh, MRI leads themselves are shielded. There's a, there's, a, um, there's a type of coating that they're placing around the internal portion of the lead that dissipates the energy from the MRI along the entire length of the, of the electrode itself and lead itself. And then the same thing for the battery pack. It, is a, it has a coating on it that allows the, um, the uh, heat that can be generated and energy that's generated by the MRI machine to the outer can of the battery pack, allowing it to dissipate and not damage the patient. So the concern previously has been that the spinal cord could be injured due to heating from the MRI scanner. Many of our patients have a history of cancer pain or they have a history of back problems for which they've received uh, many MRIs previously. In fact, the patients who uh, have back pain and receive spinal cord stimulators typically have had at least three times the MRIs that the normal population has had prior to having one implanted. And so now if you implant a spinal cord stimulator, it used to be that you were removing that diagnostic capability from them for the future. That's not the case any longer.